Good morning, Region 8. Today is Friday, April 18th. I'm Amanda Hansen. Breaking news this morning into the Region 8 newsroom. Federal Trade Commission does have the authority to go after these spammers. That is, if the agency can even track them down. We did obtain these emails. If you've ever had someone close to you commit suicide, you know it's something that just sticks with you. Now, that's something that you might want to check into because accreditation means accountability. With the weight loss journey underway, I think they're all just excited to get those first results, those first few pounds long. And of course, we'll be alongside for the ride. This is Region 8 News. Good morning, Region 8. Today is Monday, June 2nd. I'm Amanda Hansen. Thanks so much for starting your morning off with us. We have several stories that we're tracking for you that you'll see throughout the next two hours. After five years of being held captive in Afghanistan, a U.S. soldier is released. Well, now there is a big debate on how the U.S. went about his release. And authorities in Pemiscot County caught up with a suspect that they believe is involved in a string of break-ins in Region 8 and Missouri. Plus, it was a celebration of life as about 1,000 cancer survivors gathered in Jonesboro. It was quite an event. Just looking at the video, you saw that. But we kicked things off this morning to get a first glimpse of your weather for some of you that are just now joining us. And it looks like it's just kind of one of those days that we've been seeing the past several days. That's right, Amanda. More of those spotty showers that... Thanks, Andrew. We're learning new details this morning about the release of American POW Bo Bergdahl. He's now recovering at a U.S. military hospital over in Germany, but there are new questions about the prisoner swap, which led to Bergdahl's freedom. Timon Bradley has the latest on the controversial trade. Happening now, Paragol police are looking for a man accused of raping a child. Police say that this man, 18-year-old Ronnie Denny, is wanted for felony rape and sexual indecency with a child. Police believe that he could be in Hoxie, Paragol, or Jonesboro. If you know where Denny is, call the Paragol Police Department. That number is 236-7621. A Jonesboro man is behind bars this morning in Illinois for shooting a woman in the stomach. Police say that Jose Juan Marquez shot the woman Friday night on West Acre Drive in the Fairview subdivision. Police issued an arrest warrant in Jonesboro and he was caught in Illinois after being pulled over in a traffic stop. A car crash out of Crittenden County on Friday left one person dead and a Truman man injured. Darlene Wilson of Marion was driving west on U.S. Highway 64, tried to make a left turn and then struck an oncoming car. Wilson was ejected from her car and pronounced dead at that scene. And a man is dead in Clay County after getting trapped in his car following a one vehicle accident Sunday morning. Clay County Sheriff Joe McClung says that 21 year old Blake Allen Morgan ran off of Clay County Road 451 and into a section of woods. Well, the impact caused that car to catch fire and when deputies got there, they saw that Morgan was unable to escape the burning vehicle and witnesses were not able to rescue him. Morgan was pronounced dead at the scene. A missing Harrisburg volleyball coach was found dead inside of her car in a ditch off of a Craighead County Road on Saturday. Craighead County Sheriff Marty Boyd says that no foul play is suspected in Jennifer Jordan's death and it appears to have been an accident. She was last seen on Thursday. And new information this morning. The trial date has been set for the Greene County Justice of the Peace facing a second degree battery charge. Ronnie Wood is accused of striking County Judge Jerry Shipman in the shoulder on January 22nd during a meeting to discuss road improvements. The attorney waived formal arraignment during a hearing that happened on Friday and Judge Brent Davis scheduled the trial to enter a plea for August 1st. And the Paragould gynecologist accused of taking nude photos of one of his patients has pleaded not guilty to video voyeurism. Dr. Paul Becton Jr. was in court on Friday. His trial date is set for September 15th. Officers say he was arrested after a female patient caught him taking photos of her during an exam. State police say that they found numerous images of nude women on his phone. And happening later today, a Region 8 man is due in court facing several charges stemming from an incident in October of last year. Arkansas State Police say that 21-year-old Jacob Brown ran from Truman police officers and pointed a gun towards them while they were searching for him. The Poinsett County Sheriff's Office reports that Brown has also has a warrant for failing to register as a sex offender. Brown is facing several charges, including aggravated assault, fleeing, and criminal trespassing. A Jonesboro businessman accused of several crimes, including plotting to kill a former employee, is due in court later today. 
He was arrested after that former employee overheard a phone call where Barnett was planning to kill him. Before that, Barnett was already being investigated by Jonesboro Police and the Secret Service on forgery charges that involved his bank. Pemiscot County deputies have one woman in custody after hundreds of items are recovered and they're all stolen from buildings across Dunklin County and even farther widespread than that. The suspect is identified as Lisa Williams of Kennett. She is facing a number of burglary charges. The break-ins had been going on for months now, stretching as far north as Risco, Missouri and as far south as Jonesboro. The recovered property is stored at the Dunklin County Sheriff's Office and Sheriff Bob Holder says deputies are investigating more people who may have also been involved. Four, not through yet. If you have a storage unit anywhere between Jonesboro and Risco, you may want to check it out to see if you've recently been broken into and that all of your things are still there. And are you still waiting for your tax refund? If you live in Missouri, you could be waiting even longer. More than 300,000 Missourians continue to wait for state income tax refunds, totaling more than $139 million. Officials say it could be another month, though, before you get your check. They say cash flow problems are to blame for that delay. Missouri also delayed hundreds of thousands of refunds in 2009 because of the economic downturn. St. Bernard celebrated cancer survivors on Sunday. The medical center held its annual Cancer Survivor Day. It welcomed back about 1,000 survivors and their families, and everyone celebrated by telling their survivor stories, taking pictures in a photo booth. A lot of fun there and a whole lot more. One survivor says it's encouraging to see so many other survivors all under one roof. You like a big fan? Same problems. And survivor Marvin Exum says that a support system like this is why he and the rest of the survivors are able to kick cancer. And it was a great reason to celebrate for sure. And still to come on Good Morning Reach Nate, Walmart and Amazon are battling out over the sale of one product. We have the details coming up after the break. These are just a few of the pictures of the mold I found in the rental home where Iris Greenway lived with her two children. You can see the walls are covered with this dark stain from the baseboard to the window seal. All over the home, really. She claims that her landlord, Ralph Wood, called two companies to get an estimate about how much the mold removal would cost. One didn't want to risk their health. The other said that Wood would not like their estimate. In the end, neither company was hired, and she says the mold is still there, and it may have made her sick. I couldn't breathe. My rib cage feels like they're caving in on me. How frustrating has this been? Very. This is Iris Greenway's rental home at 616 North 7th and a half Street in Perigold, where she's lived for nine months. When she found out about it, she called her landlord, Ralph Wood, about it back in November. When we started moving things, we found the hole, more mold, and then it goes all the way around, even in the window sills. This is how the home looked back in February. Walls covered with hundreds of black rings. And this mold is so bad, just look at the window seal here. You can see it lines the window seal, goes all the way down the wall to the floorboard, and what's even worse is Iris's mattress was butted up against the wall. When we raised it up, I saw it. It was sopping wet and black. I was born with lung problems. I've got asthma, emphysema, and COPD. You know, so I was used to waking up, coughing, couldn't breathe, but it just got worse. Iris was even diagnosed with a lung infection. As you can see, this letter from her doctor states the mold in the house could be the underlying cause. He told her to move out. I live on Social Security. I can't afford to just up and move. I don't even have a vehicle. I did have, but I sold it to be able to get my kids Christmas. He charges $525 a month here. What exactly is growing on these walls? I pulled my own sample and went to the Department of Biological Sciences at Arkansas State University. Now we're ready to look at it. Where Dr. Martin Huss put it under the microscope. The load of spores in the sample that he brought me is, is very high. I mean, that's not a minor amount. You do have a variety of things on here. I definitely see Alternaria and Cladosporium. They're both quite prevalent. Both are common indoor molds. Oh, I see it, yeah. Under the microscope, all those brown clusters are alternaria. Cladosporium is often what you find on a shower curtain. Now, if you just have like a little patch of mold, 
uh, then you know we're not talking about taking down the entire wall. Yeah. You know what you're showing me is a, an extreme example, but if you had like just a, like a little tiny patch of mold, she probably could use a disinfectant. Again, based on your photos, I would think that you'd have to take more aggressive steps. Huss says the biggest thing is finding the underlying problem. These molds thrive where there's access to moisture. You have any sort of moisture coming into the house, uh, either from the plumbing or from outside source, you need to correct that problem. What's going to end up happening is, is six months, a year later, you're going to end it up with the same right problem. Dr. Huss says he wouldn't want to be living in a home with that amount of mold. Personally, I wouldn't want to be breathing in the, this much stuff. See these uh, round cir circular uh, yeah. areas? Those represent individual colonies producing large numbers of spores. Remember, a lot of these molds, they're naturally occurring in the environment, but we just don't sleep with them every night. Dr. Shane Spites says when it comes to these type of molds in your health, it often depends on the individual. We've seen all over, like I said, all over the place, from seeing them in the clinic with a little bit of runny nose and cough congestion to in the intensive care unit. Spite says mold infections are not like viral or bacterial infections and could mean weeks or months of treatment, not to mention costly. When it comes to Iris's condition, Spite says the mold can pose more of a risk. The problem with people with asthma or COPD is it's gonna, you're going to have more frequent flare-ups. Those flare-ups can be life-threatening, and we see that frequently. You've reached the offices of Ralph Wood. I left several messages with Ralph Wood, the owner, but he never returned any of my calls. I did some research on his background and found that Ralph Wood was cited for failure to abate nuisance upon two different occasions, once in 2004 and another in 2010. Officials with Paracle Police tell me that type of violation is in regards to maintaining a property. The department no longer had a record of the report from 2004 because of software changes, but the incident report from 2010 did not have a description of the cause. Only to say Mr. Wood was cited to appear for a location at 302 South 22nd Avenue. Well, he told us that this heater here works. When Iris and I wrapped up our interview, she had one thing in mind. To get my stuff out of here and get my kids out of here. A week after our interview, Iris was finally able to move out of the home. We never were able to find out why the mold was not removed, but if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the most common indoor molds and preventative measures that you can take, we have a link to the CDC website attached to this story at KITA.com. Amanda Hansen, Region 8 News. You're about to meet Jane. She loves to cook, spends a lot of time in her kitchen and invites her big family over every Sunday for her home made from scratch recipes. But can her kitchen stand the test of a health inspector? Take a look. You know, I've never inspected a person's home before, uh, so this is going to be interesting. Go to the front door. Danny Eddy is a Craighead County Health Inspector. Come in. Jane Kirton, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you today. Hi, man. Meet Jane. Are you going to ace this, or what are you thinking? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is wash my hands. Okay. Well, here goes nothing. And it's time to suit up for the white glove inspection. I would start in their walk-in cooler uh, looking at temperatures. And number two, to look at the food, how it's stored, uh, how they're cooling food, all that type of thing. Uh, so I will check the temperature against this one. And your cooler is saying 39 degrees. Looking good. Eddie says safe temperature is anything 41 degrees or less. You have your eggs up on a upper shelf and I would always recommend that the eggs, any meat, anything like that be stored on a bottommost shelf. Your eggs will sometimes crack and I have actually seen them ooze out of the carton and over everything underneath them. I did not know that. I did not know the need to be stored lower in the refrigerator, so that's a good thing. Um, also, check food for expiration dates. I would have them date it as the day that they made this and they would have seven days to use it. Fridge is done. Just you have a pantry. That's a great pantry. Not real organized, but it's pantry. <laughs> we would be looking to see that you wouldn't have chemicals. Oh no. All the food uh, at least six inches up off the floor. One uh, insect control. The other to keep chemicals from getting on food when you clean the floor. So far, Jane, not too bad. What's next? We do also look at is microwaves. Um, and one of the 
easiest things to miss on a microwave, yours is nice and clean here, is that if you don't cover food, it will splatter up to the top. The food stuck up there could create bacteria that might lead to a foodborne illness if it gets into other foods you heat up. Almost done. Floor is good, easily cleanable. It's a little bit dark. Countertops are, are nice, um, could be easily cleaned and sanitized. Ooh, homemade brownies. I had to sneak one before we wrap things up. I approve. How, how do you think she, she weighed out with, with the inspection? When can I come to lunch? Just any day. Okay, that'll be good. Just that'll be time. good. Just schedule it. She, she, you did very well. Thank very well. You. Thank you. And just one more tip. Eddie says, when you thaw out food, it's best to do it in the refrigerator and not to just lay it out because there's a chance the food could sit in an unsafe temperature for too long. I do want to note that the inspector did have to alter things just a little bit from a commercial kitchen to do a home kitchen, and the food was not prepared at the time of the inspection, so that played a role too. For a closer look at what the food inspection check sheet looks like, you can find it on our website, KITA.com, just by clicking on this story. Amanda Hansen, Region 8 News.